Alright, so here we are. Uh, I was recently just asked to make the 2020 version of a Spinosaurus animated. And in order to animate something, you need a model. I don't have a model, so uh, here I am online. I thought I'd go ahead and make this into about like a three-part series or so to make a model and then animate it for y'all. Uh, you can leave suggestions if you have anything you'd like to see me make in the future. But here I am just taking those images that I found and I'm importing them into Maya. Here's me changing it to meters to line up with scaling a little nicer. Not that it matters, but I don't know. Why not? So uh, yeah, now that I have those all saved, I went ahead and put them on a layer so I can make them transparent or templates, whatever it's called, I don't remember the name. Uh, which basically just makes it to where I don't accidentally click on them. Then I have these like green lines going around. I think they're the uh, like the camera planes for the different orthographic views. So I just went ahead and put that on another layer so I just didn't have to see those lines. Um, but yeah, here I am just bringing in a, a basically just a block so I can see get these two different images I had to about the same size. Uh, scale wise that way everything lined up a little nicely now these aren't perfect profile pictures as a, a side view front view top view but I, I got the rough idea didn't need them to be perfectly made for uh, referencing and it had been quite a while since I had last uh, used Maya it's been a very long time actually got a new computer and lost the program and everything but I recently was able to get it back so I was having to look up my keyframes and whatnot because I just had completely lost all that muscle memory but I mean here you can just see me kind of extruding this one block along the body just to get started all the way down to the tail and I didn't include the sail because I thought it'd be easier just to extrude that up later and that's what this line right here is for. So, moving on a little bit more, I'm just kind of like aligning these uh, different vertexes to how I think that they would benefit me. I was going through a bunch of different ideas here with this back leg because it was like... I found it a little tricky to try and think of what would work best in terms of the model. I'm not much of a modeler, I just need a model, so I have to uh, have to make my own. So you'll probably see some questionable techniques going on here. I am definitely not a modeler. So uh, yeah. Then there I am just extruding the sail. Nice and lined up. And this is not at all what the final version looks like. You just have to start with the basis get your main shapes down and then you can go in there subdivide and add your more detailed areas later on just as the method to the madness I guess makes it nice and easy here I was having some issues because uh, it wasn't set to my world orientation uh, for some reason it was being finicky so I had to go in there and change that up I don't remember uh, there was some error that happened. I don't remember exactly what I did to fix it. But then I went ahead and put a vertex, or excuse me, a insert edge loop down the middle just so I could cut it in half and just mirror it over. That way everything would work properly. That was my solution to the weird vertex issues I was having before. But yeah, you can see me here just kind of like lining up all the vertices with my reference image. I had to move that image down some so I could see the end of the tail there. If you look in the perspective view, which is the view on the right, then you can see it's actually starting to take shape a little bit. Looking a little bit more spino-like and a little less block-like. Here's me just lifting up the middle vertex to get that like ridge of the, the fin running along the top of the tail there. This is just me messing around with the end of the tail, trying to smooth it out a little bit. And now we get to the interesting part. We have to 
somehow form a shoulder and begin an arm coming out the side. I remember having a lot of trouble with this and trying to think of how this would work best because, like I said before, definitely not not big on the modeling. I don't mind it. I enjoy it. It's just not my strong suit. And eventually I come to a conclusion. It's definitely not this though. You'll see me change it up in a minute here because originally I had my idea as you saw just a few seconds ago was to insert the cut which turned into a triangle which was not 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 ideal for making this arm we need more of like a, a square to work on really that way we get like a nice even roundabout thing uh, but yeah now you can see we've got a little bit more of an arm coming out the side there and in a moment we'll just move them out to more easily accessible area just trying to curve out some of those edges delete the model again just to have it all nice and mirrored later on don't really need that side and then here was my idea of trying to line it up with the, the image on the right or excuse me on the left because it it was more T-pose like which is good rather than having the arms tucked up so that whenever you do unfold them there's not a ton of stretching going on but I found it kind of awkward to work with so I kind of went for something in between the two images where the arms were back like in the side view right here but not quite as much uh, so they kind of got this weird like chicken like feature sort of look to them then same process as with the arm here's me just making the making the leg and you can see it's very skinny but we'll definitely fix that in a moment here you can like, see me starting on that now uh, I felt the foot was still a little too thick so I went ahead and skinny that up because there's gonna be three more or excuse me two more digits total of three for the toes so it'll widen it up naturally just by adding those but I definitely think I did better with the extrusion of the leg there than the arm before I just kind of pulled straight out and started going back with it whereas on this one I did two different extrusions so that I had that crease in the middle rather than just like a stretched out plane that's very difficult to try and explain but if you decide to try and work on one of these projects yourself, then perhaps you'll know what I'm trying to get at. And then I thought that it was uh, time to get looking at the head here, I believe, because I've been working on everything else, and the most interesting part about the creature is going to be the head, obviously, and I didn't, I hadn't done anything with that yet, so here you can see me going in there, just kind of shaping that out some more course you gotta fix playlist issues and then right here you can see me separating the where the hands would be and where the feet would be from the rest of the body because I found this one technique before where you kind of model those separately and then just attach them later and I liked the way that that worked out, so I thought I'd do the same process here and just reconnect these limbs later. So you can see me working out the uh, grouping of that. So that way I can subdivide the whole mesh and not have those little extremity bits of the hands and uh, feet be super subdivided. They don't need as much subdivision as the rest of the body. Right and now one last piece of advice is definitely make sure that you're not an idiot like I am and save your project because Maya crashed on me and there went that. So that's going to be the end of this one. It was cut a little bit short because I lost everything so it'll be all back up in, in a similar place for the next video. I just have to go and make the model again which is unfortunate but hey at least I wasn't super far into it. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one then.